Hi, I'm Takoa De Silva with Sprott Global Resource Investments, and I'm sitting down here today with four gentlemen who have dedicated their adult careers to natural resource exploration and prospect generation businesses. And the theme that we're going to discuss here today is where are we in the resource exploration and prospect generation uh, business markets? Where are we going? What is the path of lowest risk and highest reward? With me here to discuss the topic is Mr. Elaine Charest, VP of Exploration with Everham Resources. Mr. Stephen Nano, CEO of Mirasol Resources, Mr. Brent Cook, publisher of Exploration Insights, and Dr. Simon Ingram, CEO of Reservoir Minerals. Uh, gentlemen, thank you for joining me here. Yeah. Uh, so to start out with, uh, I'm wondering if we can just uh, go down the line here and mention a few bullet points uh, about yourself, your background, and why your perspective is significant for the person watching in the uh, resource and exploration businesses. Uh, Mr. Charest, if you could start, please. Well, I'm a geological engineer, Elaine Charest. I've uh, been working in Mexico for the last 22 and a half years, um, basically specialized in grassroots exploration, finding new prospects. and. Uh, my knowledge is basically based on everything that, that goes from finding new properties and bringing it up to a level where, um, to a level where it's a feasible mine, uh, which is uh, and is basically exclusive to Mexico. Well, I got a lot of experience in Mexico, and I believe Mexico is a great uh, a great country to explore. Stephen, so uh, Stephen Nano, I'm uh, the CEO and uh, one of the founders of Mirasol Resources, um, geologist uh, by training, um, over, over 25 years of experience and exploration, the majority of it in the Americas where Mirasol focuses its exploration. Um, I guess uh, this is a really interesting and opportune time for, for project generators, so I'm anticipating an interesting interview here. Hey, Brent Cook, uh, economic geologist, been doing this for over 30 years now. Uh, mostly working as a consultant to a lot of the major mining companies until 1997 when I joined Rick Rule as his mining analyst. was there till 2002. Subsequent to that, I've started uh, an investment letter called Exploration Insights, which basically covers what I'm doing with my money in the uh, exploration sector, what I'm buying, what I'm selling, what I'm avoiding. Uh, I don't get paid by anyone to say anything. Uh, it's just what I make off my investments and subscribers. My name is Simon, Simon Ingram. I'm CEO of uh, Reservoir Minerals and a founder of Reservoir Minerals. Uh, we're also a project generator. Uh, we've been working in the, the Tethian belt for nearly, nearly a decade now. We have uh, probably one of the best discoveries uh, in the last decade in, in that region. And we run a prospect generator model, and it's been a successful model, and I think we can clearly demonstrate why that is a good model to use in this time and, and indeed good times. Thanks. Uh, I had the opportunity to have a lunch with a few of you guys yesterday, and one comment uh, that you made, uh, Simon, was uh, that ground is coming up that you don't see for 10 years and there's no competition. And I'm wondering, uh, for the person watching that uh, is either familiar with the resource market or is new to it, why is that the case? What's the climate? The climate is, you know, we're going through uh, another downturn. We have uh, an industry that is a cyclical industry. We've been through quite a long boom, and we're going through quite a long bust right now. So commodity prices are falling to all-time lows, and the appetite to certainly do exploration is low. The appetite to build new mines is low right now. And, and with that, there's less money coming into the sector, uh, and in some cases, no money coming into some parts of the sector in, in early-stage exploration. So as a, as a company able to continue to explore in, in this sector uh, and this time, we, we have the opportunity to go out and pick up ground because there's just no competition. There's few people exploring for that ground. And companies are giving up ground because they can't afford to hold it. So uh, this, is, this is a time of opportunity. You, you, people get very negative in downturns and can't see the light at the end of the tunnel. But the reality is this is a time of superb opportunity if you have the, the courage and, and the backing to take those opportunities. Well, certainly, Simon makes a good point, and you know what's, what I've realized is, is the, the mining industry is cyclical. It's always been cyclical. Uh, commodities are cyclical, and it's a supply and demand fundamental. But what, what's really interesting this time, and I think is a bit different than the past, is we are now consuming uh, so much metal, uh, 90 million ounces a year, gold, 
19 million tons of copper or pounds of copper a year, uh, and we're not replacing that. And where the supply demand pinch is coming, and this is when it's going to get interesting, is that we are not finding enough new deposits to replace what we're mining, and we're not looking. And with this downturn going on now, that pinch point is even going to get much more severe. And consider it takes 10 to 20 years from discovery to production. It's going to get really interesting. So I'm 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 real positive. Although it's 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 bad out there now. I think it's going to stay bad for a while in terms of share prices. But this is when you make your money uh, buying these stocks. And this is when you know the '97 to 2002 bust. That's when I made most of my money. Was buying these stocks when it was the hardest thing in the world to do. So I'm positive. No, I, I think uh, you know an important part of of. How do you protect yourself from the, the current market? How do you take advantage of this is, from my perspective, two things. Well, one is that you, you invest in companies that are funded, that are, are going to protect their share structure, the way I think all of the companies here do, recognising that as a resource, but also investing in companies that are not exploring for things that may be economic, if there's an improved market or an improved metal price. These are companies that are focused on high value ounces, high value pounds of copper that are economic in these current market conditions. So if that company is successful, if it is focused in the right way, and you discover a high value deposit that's financially viable in this market, you'll win twice because uh, the best discoveries are often made in the deepest downturns and the companies that find those discoveries, even in a poor market, will still perform substantially. They'll perform even better coming out of this when the market is, is active and moving with them. But focus on those companies that are sus sustainable with their spend rate and that are focused on, on high value discovery deposits that, that are bulletproof to downturns, which is normal for our industry, as you've been saying. Well, I have to agree with Simon, Stephen, and, and Brent, and I want to add something to what Simon mentioned about eliminating competition. It's like cleaning up your backyard, getting rid of the bad weeds, meaning it let us grow there. Same thing in Mexico. It's amazing the amount of, of opportunities you have now because you're not walking, uh, there's not 25 companies looking at good products. There's a lot of available prospects. So, And like Brent said, the majors don't have, they're not exploring. They're not doing grassroots exploration like they used to do. And one day they're going to wake up and say, well, we need some backup uh, projects. So that's why the, 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 the companies that are surviving, that are left there, are probably the better ones. And they have a chance to pick up these prospects right now, build them up to a, a stage where they're attractive. And then I, I guarantee you, you'll have a lineup of major companies wanting these projects in 10, 12 years. And I, I'd add to that, and what we're seeing as a, as a generator is that the majors traditionally would bring their own teams in to explore, even if you have good ground. Now the situation is the majors are coming and saying, we fired most of our teams, we actually need a competent team to actually do this exploration as well. And so we, we are seeing a great opportunity for companies with good land holdings, good, good areas in, in, in prospective places, but having competent, capable teams as well. No, absolutely. I, I think um, more than ever, the, the value the value of your human resource is a key part of this story. Um, you know, quality management is is key and always key, but also the quality technical people that are going to make the decisions for you in the field. If you have that combination, it's it's a it's a very valuable asset in this market, and and will become more valuable going forward. Yes, yeah, interesting. It's, it's a real problem that we've got in this industry coming out now is that there's really not much new blood coming in, and certainly there's not a lot of mentoring going on. It used to be you'd come into this sector and you'd work for a major mining company, and you'd get the courses and some older person would teach you things and that. That's not happening so much anymore. So uh, not only is there a deficit in, you know, in new projects, new discoveries, but there's really getting to be a deficit of new people coming in that know what to, how to find things. And on top of that, in my opinion, I'll say what you guys think, but so much of the new uh, work that's being done is being done on desktop. 
uh, with computer-generated models and geophysics and this and that sort of thing. But I was with Elaine in 96 or 95. He found El Sasol. He found that hiking down a creek up a, up a, up a canyon wall and finding the gold. Same with Steve in, uh, in Argentina. Uh, it's, it's boots on the ground that work, and that's not something you get you know, coming straight out of school and sitting in a computer. So it's, it's going to get interesting. It's getting harder and harder to find things, and people like these three here that have the experience to do it are getting you know, less and less out there. I think it is really a case that, you know, as a geologist, the more rocks you see, the more deposits you see, the more you understand. And so it, it takes a long time to, to get that expertise and that knowledge. And so even if you can take the best people out of college straight away, it's going to take years before they come up to a speed and actually are very useful. So to find geologists, you can send out and understand what they're seeing, understand how what they see relates to projects and, and deposit models, etc., it, 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 it's not not a, not a skill that you just learn overnight, and so we've got a lot of people with, with grey beards still in the industry coming to the end of their careers, and we're just not replacing them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah I've got the grey beard. Um, but seriously, I mean, thinking back to my you know early exploration, uh, working in Australia and, and New Guinea and such, how many how many times have I come onto a project and just thought, oh, this is it, this is the biggest you know I'm making a discovery. You've got to have a whole bunch of failures in your past to know what a real deposit looks like. And I, I bet these guys have all got a long list of projects that they thought were going to make it and didn't. As we wrap up here, uh, because we're running out of time, guys, and thank you for giving what you already have, uh, maybe one, two quick bullet points from each of you for the person watching, for the investor that might be new. Any short advice that they could? Sure. It's about investment horizon. If you can put your money in and you can put it to work for three years, then you're going to catch the next upswing. If you can invest for one quarter, then we can't predict what's going to happen. So it's about how long you can put your money in. Uh, I'd agree with that. I think for investors coming into this, on my website, explorationinsights.com, there are two articles that talk about the last uh, bust and how we came out of it. And I think that's a really good... Um, lesson, if you will, as to what this one's going to look like as well. So it's on my website for free. I, I think um, you know, both guys here have, have made a very good point about time horizons. I think the important thing here is that um, I can't and, and no one can really predict whether we're in uh, a downturn here that's going to last six months, 12 months, many years, and it's important to recognise this as an opportunity. and, and uh, recognise the companies that see that this is an opportunity to position for the future, but I, I think it's really important to focus on, on companies that have that understanding that a good discovery in this market will still substantially improve your share price. So focus on companies that understand that and see the value in inequality discovery. It's the true path to wealth creation and it can create real wealth even in a difficult market like this. Well, I agree with all what my comrades just said, but also let's, the way I look at it now, you, have, you don't have to look at a hundred different companies to see which ones have a good project. The ones that are left, that survived, and are still surviving, mostly have good projects. And so what I would say to the people, stay tuned because there's going to be an upswing coming up, not in the first quarter, but there's going to be something coming up. Guys, thank you so much for joining me. Thank, thank you very much. It's a pleasure.